It's lunchtime at Don Don Cafe, but you wouldn't know it by the looks of this room. Ever since construction of the Canada Line began last October, Simon Kim's business has grinded to a halt. Uh, it's been pretty devastating, yeah. Simon's family has owned Don Don's in Canby Village for 10 years, but they're starting to wonder how much longer they can hold on. Noise, dust, and traffic on Canby Street have deterred his regular lunch crowd. Uh, they, just, they just can't come out for lunch anymore. Yeah, and they're not going to come out to, to this. So instead of serving customers, he waits and watches. Things aren't much better across the street at Trixie's Crepe and Ice Cream Shop. Less people are in the area, less people are walking on the street, less people visiting the shops. Ernst and his wife took over the business just two years ago and aren't sure what to expect come summer. With their uh, Canada line accelerating their cut and cover, they'll be right in front of us now for most of that time. So that's going to be really a uh, testing for our business. Once a vibrant and bustling community of independent and earthy shops, Canby Village, one of Vancouver's most beloved neighborhoods, has become noticeably subdued lately. The culprit? A $2 billion construction job on the street, the most ambitious public works project Vancouver has ever seen. Although Vancouverites have known for several years that the city was planning to build a railway to the airport in anticipation for the 2010 Olympics, few residents or merchants in this neighborhood expected construction would look like this. That's because the initial proposals for the so-called RAV line, as outlined by the province, said that twin board tunneling would be the method of construction, which would have meant that all the mess in this stretch of Canby would have been underground. So it came as great surprise when earth-moving machines showed up in front of stores like Susan Hayes, Hazel & Co. I thought there was, you know, some kind of mistake because uh, the information that I had had from City Hall was that it would be a board tunnel. So it was uh, absolutely shocking. Like most people, Hayes didn't find out about the switch to cut and cover until she read a story in the local courier late January. That's because the BC government, which commissioned the construction project, quietly announced that the plan had switched from unobtrusive underground boring to so-called cut and cover open trench digging. But they did it in a footnote. No one would troll that site. It has literally tens of thousands of pages, hundreds of thousands of pages of information on many projects. Randy Chatterjee, a resident of Canby Village and president of a group of citizens called the Do Rav Right Coalition, says that Ravco was deliberately secretive about the change. Between September when the bid was, re was received, November when it was communicated to the Environmental Assessment Office, and the end of January, there was not a word publicly about any change. There has been a lot of material put out. I mean, we've probably done more in the area of communication than, again, any other project I'm aware of of this size. Steve Crombie is the spokesman for In Transit BC the company contracted to build and operate the Canada Line for the next 35 years. We're trying to do things we can to mitigate the impacts. He also helped Ravco organize a meeting, May 2005, to discuss the change to cut and cover with the community. More than 250 people showed up. I'm here tonight as a mother, as a merchant, and as a friend of all who reside in Camp Corridor. Corey Clark opened a children's store, Oh Baby, just a year ago, with the assurance from the city that construction would not interfere with traffic on busy Canby Street. If you say the words, mitigate your impact, I'm going to print it on a t-shirt, because I cannot listen to that sentence anymore. Should the project proceed, we will do everything we can that is reasonably possible to try and mitigate the impacts and I appreciate that you don't, I appreciate that you don't, aren't fond of that particular expression. But Ravco's promises to mitigate the impacts could do little to save Corey's business, which went under seven months later, or appease the many concerns of the community. Hundreds of complaints, faxes, emails, and letters about cut and cover flooded their website the next day. But even with such strong public dissent, 
The Canada Line was rubber stamped to begin construction only a month later. Did you feel like the people of the Canada Line were listening, were paying attention to the concerns of the community? No. I, uh, I think it was a very well staged event. The Canada Line and RAV Line and in transit and airport authority and City of Vancouver, everybody involved in this project, um, they're all acting with impunity. They were hell bent on building their project their way. Don Waters manages 22 properties along the street. Since cut and cover was announced, many of his tenants have fled the Canby Village for fear of financial ruin. We anticipate that over the next 18 months, our 22 tenants will be facing approximately one to two million dollars in direct sales losses. With over 15 businesses closed since construction began last fall, Canby Village now has the highest vacancy rate of any retail area in Vancouver. Businesses in the area are reporting an average drop of 30% in sales since construction began. But merchants shouldn't be expecting compensation anytime soon. If the precedent is set to do that, it would very likely be extremely difficult to do public projects. While merchants won't be compensated, the people at the Canada Line say they're doing everything they can to, well, mitigate the impact. They hold regular open houses where the community is invited to imagine just how great the rail will be once it's complete in November 2009. They've even hired a marketing consultant to help attract customers to the area. You can see open for business billboards and posters plastered everywhere across the city. But if cut and cover is so disruptive to life in Canby Village, why didn't the Canada Line just stick with board tunneling? Crombie admits it may not be pleasant in the short term, but in the end, cut and cover will cost taxpayers less, allow them to build shallower stations, and to speed up construction. Overall, uh, we can get the project done faster, so it, it means that the disruption is, is uh, for a shorter period of time. You know, companies like you know, Starbucks and, and the bank and, and although they're slow, I mean they'll probably persevere just because they're a large corporation. But. but independent businesses are afraid they'll get caught up in the net of progress and development. They'll be driven out, the property will be worthless, developers can snap it up and build large towers, whatever they want, set back more from the road to allow this highway to, to be created. The point of this is that we were misled and that we are pawns in the game. When it's all said and done, what's going to happen to the Canby Village? All those little independent sort of bohemian stores uh, are going to be lost in the shuffle. It won't be Canby Village anymore. Catherine Scarrow for UBC School of Journalism.